So, good morning. Good. Um, we thank the Lord for this uh, morning, and uh, we know that uh, we had uh, a good night, and uh, the Lord will want to bless us again this morning, and uh, we want to look in His Word what uh, He has for us. But uh, we will welcome our sister just again to introduce herself because uh, now we are gathered and uh, we would like to start this session so that uh, she may introduce herself and uh, we may start uh, this important session. Welcome, our sister. Thanks. Yes. You can just sit. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I praise God this morning because he has been with me all this time. I want to introduce myself because it's my first time to be in this place. So my names are Sarah Matara. I come from Magic from Kisi district. So I'm happy to be here today. Amen. Thank um, you. Yes, let's go ahead. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sister Sarah. Uh, you're welcome. Yesterday we started uh, uh, dealing with uh, a topic, and uh, we were we were we were discussing uh, about uh, why is what we are studying so much important what, why is it so much important what we are studying because in everything that we study there should be an importance of studying what we are studying and yesterday we saw why we have to believe that christ is the son of god we were just laying a, a background on this uh, information we are sharing yesterday and uh, today we want to move a little bit uh, uh, deeper into the study of uh, uh, of God, the, the truth about God. We said we will be dealing with the sanctuary and we will be dealing with the truth about God. And so, uh, I'd like us to look at another uh, session, brief session, maybe 30 minutes. At, at 9.30 we'll be going to take our breakfast. Um, I want us to look at the presentation about the Father in the Bible, the Father in the Bible. And so the topic of this minute or this hour is the Father in the Bible. And uh, you will see how another belief about the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit is a bad belief or is a worse belief when it comes to the truth about God and uh, uh, just uh, like us to bow down and pray as we start this session Heavenly Father in whom all truth dwells we thank you for this session we thank you for thy love that uh, you have not left us to wander in darkness you have given us the thy word which is light and as we go through it Father, we pray for thy blessings to be with us and that you may guide us in all truth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, the Father in the Bible. This is so much important to our understanding. And uh, I'd like us to read uh, the, book of, uh, the book of John, chapter 17, verse 3. The book of John, chapter 17, <coughs> verses 3. Life. Yes, this is what? Eternal life. This is eternal life. And what is this eternal life? Continue. That they may know you, 
the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So the, the Bible is so clear that um, eternal life, eternal life is knowing the only true God. God. And this is life eternal, that they might know the, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou sent. This is eternal life, knowing the Father and the Son. There's nothing else we saw yesterday. And so, uh, we are left to inquire, who is this true God of the Bible? Who is this true God of the Bible? Because this is what we have to understand and uh, in the book of uh, romans chapter 3 verses 30 and 31 romans 3 30 and 31 Who is this God and the Father of the Bible? Yes. Romans chapter 3, verses 30 and 31. Since, since there is only one God, since there is only what? One, one God. God. Yes. Who is justified the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through, this, through that same faith? Yes. Do we then nullify the law by his faith? God forbid. Not at all. Yes. Rather, we uphold the law. We uphold the law. So, the Bible says that there is one God. One God. It repeats the same thing that um, there is one God. And uh, this one God is what we are looking at. Who is this one God? Who is this Father? This is the question that we are looking at briefly. And uh, this Father and God of the Bible is answered unto us in 1 Corinthians chapter 8. And uh, um, I love the Bible because it doesn't leave us worrying about what we believe. We establish everything from the Bible. Yeah. And 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 4. Maybe you, you have heard about God is a unity of three yeah. beings. Mm -hmm. uh, sister, have you ever heard that? Yeah. But can you find that in the Bible? If somebody today told you that, what do you believe about God? You will say that uh, we have three beings in the Bible in, that makes up one God. Have you, have you ever heard that? Is that found in the Bible? Can you find that in the Bible? Yeah. Is saying so, that? Yeah. Where? Then? Because the Bible says, Can you read that first? The Bible says there is one God. But the teaching is, there is one God that is made up of three. Yeah. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God the Son, God the Father, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But when you start looking in the Bible, is that what you find? Can that thing be established from the Bible, the pure word of God? Have you ever found a verse that says that God the Son or God the Holy Spirit in the Bible? There is no you single verse. No. You say no. There is no you single verse no. for that. And God is not made up of three beings. God is one. Because John 17, 3 says that, that they may know that the only how many people are made up in only? If I say only, numerically, how many people am I talking about? No, it's one. It is one. The word only means 
one. So you may know the only true God and Jesus Christ. So there is one true God and there is one Jesus Christ. Do you see that? So God is not made up of three beings. God is made up of one person. And the other, who is Jesus Christ, is the Son of God. Yeah. And so, we are told that um, where you read in Romans chapter 3, verse 8, read again before we go to the next verse. I want you to understand, we don't want just to go through a lot of information. It is better we go through one verse yeah. and we understand it than have many verses that we don't understand. Yeah. Yes, what does it say? Says, yes. Since there is only one God. Seeing that there is only how many gods? One, one God. One God. Yeah. Who will justify the circumcised by faith? Who will justify the circumcised by faith? faith. faith. And the uncircumcised is through that same faith. And the uncircumcised through the same faith. When the, that verse is talking, it's talking about the Jewish people who are called the circumcised, and then the Gentiles who were uncircumcised. And saying that it is one God who will, who will just try both the Jewish and the Gentiles. Only one God. No three gods that makes up one God. And that is, if you want to believe, if you want to trust that there is one God, now the next verse will tell you who is that one God. And um, just go to First Corinthians chapter eight, verse four. First Corinthians chapter eight, verses four. It says, yes. So then, about eating food sacrificed to idols. Yes. We know that an idol is nothing at all yes. in the world, and that there is no God but one. There is no God but one. One. Are you, are you getting what the Bible is saying? Leave alone what the people are saying that there is one God made up of three persons. The Bible is so clear that there is only one God. And we ask the Bible, who is that one God? So, verse 5. The God who just five. Verse 5. For even if they are so called gods. So, if we have the things which are called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, whether in heaven or on earth, as indeed as there, there are many gods. Yes. And many lords. There are many gods and many lords. Yes. Whether in heaven or on earth. P things, people are calling themselves gods. Mm -hmm. And there are many gods on earth. Yeah. That is it. And so we are told that for though there be at, uh, that are called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as there be gods many and lords many. So people are saying there are many gods. There are many lords. But unto us. Verse 6. Verse 6. Yes. Yet for us there is, there is but one God. Now pause there for a second. Whether there be any gods in heaven or on earth, lords or whichever things, mm? but unto us. Who are us? Who is Paul talking about? We Christians. Christians, but unto us. We as Christians, how many gods do we have? One. We have only one. We have only one? one God. And who is that one God? The Father. The Father. Full stop. Comma. The comma is put there. But unto us there is one God, and that God is Father. the Father. And he continues. From whom all things came, came and for whom we live. So there is one God, and that one God is the Father, and all things came from Him. Came from him. him. Everything, you name it, came from Him. Mm -hmm. And and there is there is, uh, there is but one Lord, 
Jesus Christ, through whom all things came and through whom we live. So there is one God from whom things came from. Which means even the one Lord came from who? From the one God, which is the Father. And now it is through this one Lord Jesus Christ by whom are all things and we by him. Now it is like just saying that um, all human beings came from Adam. Do you agree or disagree? came from Adam. Huh? generation of Adam and Eve. That one may not be. Because I can say that I came from my father who had also been born by his father. <laughs> Whose father was <laughs> born? Father born father. And not so, generation whom will you trace yourself from? <laughs> Your best comes from Adam. Adam and Eve. You will be coming from who? Adam. Adam. From Adam. Not even Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. One man. It came from, everyone comes from Adam. Mm -hmm. Because Eve came, came from, from the rib mm -hmm. of Adam. Yeah. And from that, now we have procreation. Now we have, yeah. yeah. But if you want to trace everyone, you will trace everyone through Adam. Mm -hmm. And so we are being told that um, there is one father. Yeah. And so even if Christ is the son of God, then we will trace him from the father as you will trace yourself from Adam. Are you understanding that? Yeah. So if we have, but there is one God, the father of whom, the father of whom are all things. So everything will be up from humanity, even Jesus Christ himself, it is from the Father. He is the origin of everything, including Jesus Christ. And look at um, what Jesus Christ says in John 5.26. And this is essential. We are looking at the Father in the Bible. John 5, 26. Yes. yes. For, for us, for us the Father has life in himself. Ah. So he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. Now, you tell me one thing. As the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life himself. Can you give somebody life who had life? No. Impossible. You cannot give life to somebody who had life. This person must have not been with life to give life. Just as uh, parents give their children life. You know, you give your child life. When the child is in the womb, you give life. And so Christ is the son of God. His life is the father who gave him his life. Which means the father can take away the life. Yeah. He's able to take away the life. And that's why when Christ became a human being, he could have sinned and be lost forever. You see that? Yeah. If he was given life, if he sinned, what happens? The life is taken back. Yeah. You know what was in the Father is immortal life. Mm -hmm. Life that cannot die. Yeah. But it was given to somebody else. Do you know that um, when uh, this earth will come to an end and everything in it, uh, those who have accepted Jesus Christ and the Father will be given eternal life. Yeah. Immortality. Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. So the Son was given immortal life. Yeah. But this immortal life, if he could have seen, what could the Father have done? Immortal life cannot die. Yeah. He takes it back to himself. Yeah. And that's why you cannot say that we have three gods that just one came and another one. 
uh, we have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They came together and became one God and worked for our salvation. And these three is what we call one God. Now, if you say that these three is what makes up one God, it means if one of them is taken away, then you don't have God. Are you seeing that? If I say that this three is what makes up one God, that means if I take one and they remain two, this is not God. Do you understand each other? And so the concept that we, three people makes up one God is not true in itself. Because if you take one out of them, then you don't have God. You have two which cannot be God because one is not there. And um, this is it. That uh, what it destroys is this. If really we have three gods that make up one God, and then God cannot die. I want you to imagine this scenario because this is important in understanding the doctrine of uh, uh, three gods in one, of the Trinity as you call it, because there's nothing like that that there is a trinity, and we have to be clear on that. Um, if you say that the three makes up one God, if you remove one, you don't have God, is it? So what it means, Christ actually did not die. Are you understanding? Because if Christ died, then we are remaining with the, the two. Then the, there is no God. So, for you to always have one God that is of three persons, it means that Christ never died. Now, if Christ never died, then it means the Bible is all wrong and there is no sacrifice for sin. And if you say, we have three gods, three people that makes up one God, is it? And you reach at the death of Jesus Christ and say it is the human that died and the God in him never died. Do you know what you are saying? It is only human sacrifice. Now can human sacrifice cover our sins? No, human sacrifice cannot cover our sins. And so you cannot, in either way you go, you will find that the doctrines that we have three gods that make up one god is not a true doctrine. Either as taught by the Sunday keepers or the Seventh Day Adventists, the way it is taught right now. Unless you come back to the Bible, you will find that you are in fault with that doctrine. You don't. Have, you only have a human sacrifice, and Jesus Christ never died at the cross. That is how. That doctrine destroys the whole theme of the sanctuary that Jesus Christ left for us. So we are looking at uh, the Bible. What does the Bible say? Galatians chapter 4, verses, uh, verses 4 to 6. <coughs> yes. But when. No, uh, sorry, Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4 to 6. Correct it. Oh, 4 to 6. Yes. Yeah. There is one. But when the said time had fully come. Ephesians. 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 Four. Four. Six. 4 to 6. Yeah, it says. Yes. There is one body and one spirit. There is one body and one spirit. Just as you were called in one hope, yes. you are called in <coughs> one Lord, one faith, one baptism. One Lord, yeah. one, one faith, faith, one, faith. one, baptism. one baptism. I, I want you to see how that it relates to the doctrine of God. If we had one Lord, yeah. one faith, we will have one baptism. Yeah. We will not have sprinkling. We, we will not have passing through the flags to be baptized. We shall not have bowing down before people to be baptized. You know people baptize in different ways. There are people who are baptized through sprinkling. 
There are people who, like I was in salvation, you passed <coughs> under the flood, that is baptism. There are people who jump over the fire, that is baptism. And you know why we have all those things? Different doctrines. Yes. Not only different doctrines, there is a special doctrine. You can open for us because the doctrine okay. about God. Yeah. Because you pe people believe in different gods. Yeah. They do things according to what they are gods. Okay. We we'll tell them. Mm. But if we have this one God of the Bible, we will have one Lord, Jesus Christ, and one baptism. Mm. We will not be having these different things. But because we are we, we are drinking from different gods. That is why we have different doctrines. We cannot be led into one faith. You see, there is one Lord and one faith. But if we are having different gods, then we have different faiths. But if we have one single God, believing in him and what he says, then our faith will be one. And the baptism will be one. Verse 6. Verse 6. Yes. One God and... Father of all. One God and Father of all. Of all. Who is above all and through all and in you, you all. So we have that one God and the one God is the Father. The Father. We don't have many gods as people say that makes up God. We only have one God. And so this is something that uh, the scripture makes it clear. 1 Timothy 2.5 also. We are looking at this one God of the Bible. And we found that this one God of the Bible is the one that loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy 2.5. 1 Timothy 2.5. 1 Timothy. That is 1 Timothy chapter 2 verses 5. <coughs> Sorry. What does it say? For well, there is one God. Yes. And one mediator between God and the man, the man Christ Jesus. Yes, there is yes. one God and God. and one, one mediator. Now, brethren, I, I want you to think about this. I hope our sister, you are understanding what we are talking about. You are you are coming to some understanding that there are no three persons in one God. Now, look at the verse again. For there is one God, is one God and one, one mediator between, between God and man. man, the man, Jesus Christ. Now, let, let us read this verse, maybe as people say that there are three gods. I'll read it like this. For there is one God, God and one mediator. No, no, no. I'll read it like this. If we have three persons in one God, I'll read, for there is God the Father, the Father God, the, God Son, the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, and one mediator between God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the man Christ Jesus. You see how that is entirely wrong. I don't know if you are seeing that. And then, in this one God, you have included Jesus Christ because God is three, three persons in one, isn't it? Yeah. But again, you are having the mediator of this one God who includes Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ to be the mediator. Yeah. How, how can Jesus Christ be a mediator of himself? It's like now Christ is mediating against himself. Are you getting what I'm saying? If we say that there are three gods that make up one God and Christ is included in this God, is it? So, who will be mediating for who? For them. Jesus is mediating for us. Jesus is creating, mediating for us. And so, he is the mediator. He is not part of the three gods making one God. The one God is the Father. And then, Jesus Christ is the mediator. It's the go between. So, you have one God. The Father, then in between you have Jesus Christ, and the other side you have human beings who have sinned. 
Is it? So we don't have three gods in this place, and then Christ in between, and then human beings. Are we together? We have one God who is the Father, then Jesus Christ, and then the sinners to reconcile us. Now, James chapter 2, verse 19. You know, we speak things which do not make sense even to the devil. Have you ever wondered that? That uh, sometimes we speak things which even the devil doesn't agree with. Have you ever wondered? James 2.19. James 2.19, we are just a few minutes short for breakfast. Yes, James 2.19. You believe that there is one God. What? You believe, you believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that. Yes, you know, it is it's so wrong for People who call themselves to believe that we have three gods. Yet the devil believes there is one. Why do you think that it is important this statement was written? That the devil believes there is one God. For, for this time I'm asking you to believe what the devil believes. There is one God. Yes. Because the Bible says so. Is it? Yeah. Uh, why do we have to believe that the devil believes there is one God? I don't know if you understand there what is I'm a, There is this, this statement which says that uh, when it is uh, the devil hears about this name, they fear. Oh. No. The devil was in heaven. Amen. That is the statement. Mm -hmm. The devil was in heaven, and how many gods did he see? One. He is so one God. So if the devil himself is telling you who believes there are three gods that you see, you are worse than me. Because I was in heaven and I'm telling you the truth, there is one God. God. He knows about God. Yeah, he knows about God very well because he was in heaven. Demons know about God yeah. because they were in heaven. So this is not something that the devil is lying about. He was there. But you who was not in heaven, you are saying there are three gods. Yet even the devil who is the father of lies, at this point he's talking the truth. So between you and the devil, who is the worst? <laughs> because the devil is witnessing the truth. The father has said there is one God. The son is saying there is one God. And the devil himself, who is not going to heaven, who was chased away from heaven and he would never go there, he's telling you, my brothers, believe that there is one God. Why? I was there in heaven. I came from there. You, you haven't been in heaven and you are struggling with three gods. What is the problem with you? This is, the this is the devil talking to you now, not even God himself. He's saying there is one God, and that is the Father. And they believe that and they tremble. But after believing that, their life is not changed. They continue in sin. Yeah. But you who believe there is one God, believe and let it affect and change your life. And do you know the problem that the devil had? He didn't only want to have one God. He wanted God to be worshipped and him to be worshipped. Yeah. To have many gods. And God says, no, this cannot be happen. We only have how many gods? One God. One God. And whoever I will say that you worship is the one who will worship. But because God did not say that the devil should be worshipped, now we have a problem because there is one God, and the devil wants to be God and be worshipped. And God says, no, that can never happen. You are a creature, and it is only me who will be worshipped. And then my son is the other person who will be worshipped. Because I have said that he should be worshipped. And this is the thing. The devil is a creature. He was created, is it? Yeah. Christ was not created. Yeah. The Bible says he was begotten. Yeah. And I said, I told you yesterday, as a human being, you beget a human being. Yeah. But God begets what? God. So the Son of God has all divinity in him. And that's why the Father says that, worship the Son as you worship me. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. In John chapter 5, we are told to worship the Son by God. Yeah. But the devil wanted to create another God. But there is only one God, the Father. And so, sometimes we have to ask ourselves, why do we want to be more evil than the devil, having other gods? Yet the devil believes there is one God. We are the worst. <laughs> yeah, and uh, there is a writer says, there is a some certain writer who says that uh, in the day of judgment, the devil will say, no, your sins are yours. With me, I never knew even what you were doing. Because what you believe is not what I believe. Mm -hmm. The devil believes that there is one God, you believe there are three gods. Yeah. So you cannot blame the devil for that. It is your own making. He is not the one who has taught you that. Mm -hmm. It is you who has manufactured the same thing. And so there is one God. And uh, that God has a son whom should be worshipped. This is the God that we follow. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 16. Ten minutes and I'll be through. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 16 to 18. <coughs> yes. We have not followed stories. Peter is saying we are not following stories. Mm -hmm. Yes. When we told you about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in power, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty, he received the honor and the glory from God, the Father. So Christ received glory and honor from who? God. From the Father. Everything comes from the Father, from the one God of the Bible, and goes to the Son and to us. When the voice came yes. from the majestic, majestic glory, saying, yes. This is my Son, whom I love with all, with him, I am well pleased. Yes, so everything comes from the Father to the Son, and then to us, and then we give glory to the Father through the Son. Look at the book of John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Verses 23. John 5, 23. It says yes. that all my honor, the Son just as they honor the Father, whom Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father so, who sent him. So the Father has a Son, and He has said, Honor Him as you honor me, worship Him as you worship him, me. The only way to the Father is through the Son, not another God, but through the Son. He is the one who has commanded that we may worship and honor His Son. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3. Chapter 1, verse 3. Second Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 3. It says, yes. Chapter 1, verse 3. Yes. Praise, to, praise be to the God. And the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise or blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort. Comfort. Yes, amen. So Christ has a Father. And that Father is our Father also. And you know what? Christ has a God. Do you know that? Go to the book of uh, John. The book of John. I want to show you. Christ has a father and Christ has a God. John chapter 1 chapter 20 verses 17. Jesus said to her, do, do not cling to me. Do not cling to me? For I have not 
yet ascended to my father. Yes. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father and to my God and your God. Yes. So Christ has a father and has a God. Are you seeing that? Mm -hmm. It is strange. You have seen it in the Bible. You never knew it was there. <laughs> no, you have been reading it, but you have not been keen. Mm -hmm. Christ has a father and Christ has a God. Which means there is only one true God. Are you seeing that? There is only one God. And it is the Father. The Father does not have a God. He is God. But Jesus Christ has a God. Has a Father and a God. Which means Christ has someone to worship. The Father. And so Christ is the Son of God. That is why he will go ahead and worship him. But the Father does not worship the Son. Because he is the God over everything. And so we don't have three gods making up one God. Are you seeing how Trinity is bad? And it is a deception. It destroys everything. It makes a, the Bible a liar. So Christ has a father and has a God. But the God of the Bible do not have a God. He is the God of the Bible. And so Christ is only God because he is the son of God. And as the child has the DNA of the parent, so Christ has the DNA of the word. And the human child has a human DNA. But Christ as the son of God has what? A divine DNA, divinity in him. And so he's worthy of worship, but he is the son of God. Look at Hebrews. Like three verses and we are done. The book of Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. Are you there? Mm -hmm. Yes. Go look at verse, um, verse 8. But about the son, yes. he says, but about the son, he says, this is the father saying about the son, yes? Your throne, O oh God, will last forever and ever. Your throne, O oh God. So the father calls the son God. But remember, he is the son. Why is he called God? Because he is divine. Okay? He came from the father, so he is divine. What comes from God is God and is worth of worship. So we are not having two gods, but God the Father and the Son who is divine. And that is why he is called what? God. So he tells him, but unto the Son thy throne, O God, continue. Forever and ever, verse 9. Verse 9. Yes. You have loved righteousness. You have loved righteousness. And hated wickedness. And hated wickedness or iniquity. Therefore, God, your God. Therefore, God, God, God you are your God. God has set you above your companions. He has set you above what? Your, your companions. companions. So Christ has God as his God. By anointing you with the, the oil of joy. So, this is what I want to say. That uh, God has a son. And he is, that son is God by virtue that the father has given him life. The father has given him divinity. And he has everything of God. And he is worthy of worship. And uh, this... It's so important because we are learning that if you say that there are three gods that cannot die, then it means Christ never died on Calvary. Then it means that it is a human sacrifice that was offered. Then it means God did not risk anything by giving us his son. 
Because I want you to think about this. If it says that Christ risked to be lost, yet you say he is God that cannot die. You are simply saying that actually the Bible is a lie and the atonement was sacrificed and it was trickery that happened at Calvary that somebody died when he didn't actually die. This is how the doctrine of three gods in one or trinity destroys the sanctuary message and it shows us that Christ never died but he was just playing us. It was a trick that he died, yet he never died. It was a trick that he could be lost, yet he was never, he, 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 if he sinned, he could not be lost. Mm -hmm. And this is how people are caught up in these issues, and uh, it destroys the Bible, it destroys the sanctuary message, it destroys all atonement, and we are left with human sacrifice, and human sacrifice cannot finish our sins. Cannot give us victory, cannot give us life, cannot finish sin. It leaves us a sinful people and it makes God alive. If God says that He gave a son who could be lost, yet we say that He is another God who could not be lost. And so, brothers and sisters, that is what I wanted us to share in this first session, although it may not be as deep as you would won't make it but we have only one God and that's one God is the Father and Christ has a God as you have seen but the Father do not have a God yeah. and so that leaves us with God the Father his Son and in the later time we shall be seeing about the Spirit because they say that God the Holy Spirit something that is not in the Bible we shall find that actually there is nothing like that and uh, Christianity has nothing to hang on if the Bible they believe in is a lie. Do we have any question? Mama, do you have any question? Can I ask about the... How can we... We, we have seen that the, there is no three. There is no three persons in one person who is God. Yeah. Uh, so can we say that the Holy Spirit for, is a, on, was was left by Jesus? Uh, we are saying that um, there is one God the Father and His Son, is it? How does the Holy Spirit now come in? And she's asking, was the Holy Spirit left by Jesus Christ? I'll just like us to read three verses and then we close. We shall come to the topic of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We have to come to it because it is another misunderstood subject. But I want you to see what the Bible says about the Holy Spirit. It's not another God. But uh, look at, uh, I want you to write this down. We are starting with... Um, um, Acts chapter 2, verses 33. Acts 2, 33. Let me see if I can have it. Acts, Acts 2, 33. Acts 2. When uh, Jesus Christ was going to heaven, he promised his disciples the Holy Spirit. We understand that in John chapter 14, is it? Yeah. He, he, he told them that he will give them the Holy Spirit. He will send the Holy Spirit to be their helper, to reprove of sin, judgment, and uh, to guide them in all truth, righteousness, is it? So, what is this Holy Spirit that Christ promised them? Acts chapter 2, verses 33. Yes. The Son has received the promise of the Holy Spirit from who? From the Father, yes? The promise of the Holy Spirit and has bought out what you now see and hear. And King James says that he has shed forth which you now see and hear. So the Son received the Holy Spirit from? 
the father and then he gives it out yeah. so and you remember the spirit is with the jesus christ yes but he has received it from the father from the father yeah in fact when you read john 20 22 it says that he breathed on them and said receive ye the holy spirit go ahead and read it john 20 22 john chapter 20 Verses 22. It says, yes. <clears throat> and when he had said this, he pleaded, 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 mm -hmm. and them, uh -huh. and said to them, yes, receive the Holy Spirit. He breathed yeah. on them. Now, my question to you, my brother Pete, yeah. is this. Can you breathe a person into a person? If if the if God the Holy Spirit is another person, like the Father and the Son, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. If the Holy Spirit is a human being, like a, a person with a form like you and you, let us say that you are the tree that makes up the the the, the God of of heaven. Is it yeah. three people that makes up one God? India. Now, let us say. It's so bad to use these analogies, but let us say that this is the Father, God the Father, this is God the Son, this is God the Holy Spirit. So, this God the Son receives God the Holy Spirit from God the Father, and this is God the Holy Spirit, then you breathe again to me. It's impossible. It is impossible to breathe a person into a person yeah. like that. So the Holy Spirit is the breath of God. Jesus. To Jesus, and Jesus then gives to the people, yes. to the people. Yeah. But in that bread, it is not just bread, but it has the divine power. Yeah. It has the character of God yeah. that is given unto us. In that bread, it is combined what we call the personality. When we talk about the personalities, the mind, the character, the power, the gifts, they are breathed, they are imparted to the believers. So I said we shall read three verses. Look at um, the book of uh, John chapter 3 verses 34. Christ promised that he will give us the Holy Spirit. But this Holy Spirit, he receives it from the Father. Like uh, I can give you a gift inherent in you. And then you give out somebody. 334. Yes. Yes. For he... Whom God has sent. For he whom God has sent and speaks the words of God. Speaks the words of God. For God does not give the spirit by a messenger. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Unto him. Unto him. So God does not give Jesus Christ spirit by measure. He gives him in fullness. Full. And then the Son now gives us that spirit. Yeah. Everything. Mm -hmm. And then John 6 63. John 663. 663. Yes. And then the last verse will be the two last verse will be Galatians and uh, Titus. John 663. Change. Yes. The spirit gives life. Yes. The flesh comes for nothing. Yes. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the spirit and life. They are full of what? Spirit and life. So when Christ receives the Spirit from the Father and He gives unto us, it is full of Spirit and life. When He breathes upon us, it is full of Spirit and life. Titus chapter 3 verse 5. Verse 6. I think I'll close there because the topic of the Spirit will come. Titus chapter 3 verse 6. Chapter six. Yes. Six. 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 He has given unto us generous through Jesus Christ. So everything is from the Father to the Son to us. Yeah. 
it flows like that. We don't have three gods. Yeah. No, we don't have three gods. We have the Father, the Son, and their Spirit. Yeah. They give unto us, but we shall cover more on the Spirit when we, we come back in the evening because the session that will follow will be about the sanctuary. And so, yes, our sister Sarah, uh, it is true that um, Christ promised the Holy Spirit. And as you say, he has left us with the Holy Spirit. But that Spirit is the life of the Father that goes through the Son to us. It is a channel like that. It is not three gods. It is not a person. It, it's not as a person as yeah. people may think that it's a, a, an invisible person walking around that fills people and makes them fall down, makes them speak in tongues and make them do all these things they do, saying that we have been filled with the Holy Spirit. No, that is not the thing. No, the Spirit has the character of God, calmness, mm -hmm. humbleness, meekness and all that. This is what the Son received from the Father and gives unto us. But our topic was the God of the Bible. Yeah. It is the Father. Yeah. And He has what? A Son. A son. And a Son worships Him as God. Jesus yeah. Christ. And even when everything comes to an end, the Son will be still under His, be under his Father. Yeah. May the Lord be with us. Yeah. Let us pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, because truth only sanctifies but error does not sanctify and so we want truth and nothing but the truth help us to walk in it and after we walk in it help us to impart the same to others bless us lord and continue teaching us thy ways in jesus name i pray amen, amen.